the first time that I heard about anterior path, I thought it was might be a little bit of a, I guess, gimmick for lack of a better word. Um, we already had direct anterior being such a successful uh, procedure to get patients out of pain for their hip that I thought, I don't know why we would need to add anything different to that. However, the first time that I actually saw what it actually meant in real life and actually tried it and used the instrumentation, um, I realized that it was definitely something that can improve upon an already very successful procedure. The main challenges associated with the traditional anterior approach have been uh, wound problems and uh, femoral uh, complications, and both of those are really related to exposures. So when I first heard about anterior path, uh, the first thing I thought was, well, why are we making the acetabulum easier? Because the acetabulum is already the easy part of the case, the problem is the femur. And then as soon as those words came out of my mouth, I quickly realized that if we could somehow use this technology to change the acetabular preparation a little bit, we could actually focus more on the femur. Every time a reamer goes in and out of the um, acetabulum, when you're doing a standard approach with standard instrumentation, the position of that reamer changes every time. With the cannula, with the path technique, that reamer is gonna end up in the exact same location, exact same trajectory. So I've found that I don't have to actually look at it under fluoro. And then on top of that, because the instruments aren't in the way, the drive shaft of the reamer is not in the way of you actually seeing the cup, you can actually watch it under direct visualization still through a pretty small incision. The, the acetabulum is, you see that wonderfully in the, in the anterior approach no matter what. But the femurs can be tough. Uh, getting the releases done, getting it rotated so that you can get your brooch in the right way and get the component in. Now that we don't have to worry about where we put our incision with respect to the acetabulum, we can put it exactly where we want it for the femur. So now we get the best of both worlds. We still get great acetabular exposure, but now the femur becomes so much easier to prepare. And that's been classically what's the, the struggle in anterior hips is getting the femur done. The main incision is optimized for the femur. It's not sub-optimized for the acetabulum. I have great exposure to the acetabulum. But when I put the reamer in, I like to be able to use a straight reamer and I'm not levering down, I'm not being, I'm not being forced into uh, the anterior part of the pelvis by either the soft tissues or the femur. They're not in the way. Whereas the standard anterior hip, you always have to be cognizant of, of fighting that uh, posterior soft tissue and bone. We haven't had that issue. By having more of a straight uh, insertion and reaming with the path reamers, you really go where the bone is and where the uh, natural hip center should be. So that uh, is another indirect advantage of using these kind of instrumentation because you avoid being uh, directed by the uh, uh, poor design of these reamers to uh, not place a component where it should be or relying heavily on the C-arm. And now with the path reamers, you don't need to do that. You can just see where your bone is you're not being pushed in one direction or the other and get your uh, component in where the bone is at the right spot for that patient. We really are just making a surgery that is successful, that has a few difficult points into an easier surgery and we're easing those difficult points. When I first heard it, I wasn't sold, but 100% was wrong and, and I fully committed to it now and, and it's, been, it's been fantastic.